Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning and also equally warm welcome to you and if you find my content of use um, and you enjoy the content that I provide every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues. Um, so. Again, if you're new to the channel, one of the things in our, and really my approach to trading is to combine fundamental analysis and technical analysis. A lot of traders on YouTube will say it's one or the other. Also, there's a lot of misconceptions about fundamental analysis. It's not going to look at uh, something like Forex Factory and trying to ch uh, trade um, you know, individual news events. Events. It's a, really about understanding how to determine a currency's value over the medium to long term and then looking at uh, the technicals as a way to uh, technical strategies as a way to enter so uh, combining the both gives us the best of both worlds and uh, keeps us on the right side of the market more often than not so um uh, really, again, like I said, the trade process, a bit of a detailed look quickly before we get into the technicals and fundamentals is understanding um, our fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which you can get access to if you go to trading180.com for less than a pound a day. There's an option there. And um, what we do is really um, look for fundamental convergences and divergence trades to establish price reversals or trend continuations. So um, I also have a video on fundamental convergence divergence and I'll put it a link to it in the top right hand side of the screen. And then once we've established our, um, our fundamental bias, then we use supply and demand zone, CPR, capture pain relief and stop hunt manipulation technical strategies to enter into uh, trades either long or short. And again, if you want to find out more, please go to trading180.com or just look at the videos that I have hundreds of hours of video that I have on the uh, on, on on YouTube um, so uh, let's get into the uh, the the, uh, the fundamentals and technical analysis and this week I'm going to do something slightly different I'm going to go straight to the uh, technicals and uh, really kind of sprinkle over the uh, the fundamentals on top for the major uh, currencies like the dollar the uh, the pound and the euro and as well as gold as well so <clears throat> Uh, starting off from the dollar index and um, so the dollar index really is just a measure of dollar strength against um, a basket of other currencies like the euro again the yen the uh, the pound and the Australian dollar and uh, again deciding on what we want to do for our fundamentals first usually is what we want to do and then we look to the technicals but I'm doing it a bit backwards my backwards approach but just to give you a bit of an idea um, depending on again your uh, your fundamental bias, you would be looking for um, the dollar index as um, just some confluence for dollar strength overall. So if, if you think that the dollar is going to be a buy, then what you're looking for is a dollar pullback, for example, to a demand zone in you know with the dollar index and then look for any kind of buy trades on any other dollar crosses like the uh, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar um, CAD, for example. Um, for me, I think the dollar is probably a bit of a short term buy, but medium to long term sell at certain areas. This level has been touched several times, so the more time the level's touched, the weaker it becomes. So I probably expect the dollar to kind of rise a bit higher if it can rise actually up to the uh, 91, 80, 92 area. I think that is a brilliant area to look for um, some short in confluence. If you're looking for short-term buys, um, I guess any kind of pullback into uh, a demand zone or if prices continue to go higher, use that as, as confluence for uh, some dollar buys. And really, the one of the reasons why is um, my overall dollar bearishness um, in the medium to long term is that Janet Yellen faces currency war redux as strong dollar ditched. Yeah? And I've been talking about this for um, since last year, July, August, I would say August from when they, uh, the Jackson Hole and the, the Federal Reserve employed the, uh, the, the Federal Average Inflation Target um, Monetary Policy 
where they are doing average inflation rather than just um, uh, usual target in their 2%. And what that actually means, and again, I've got videos on YouTube explaining this, um, is that um, they really want a cheaper dollar. And a cheaper dollar um, and a weaker dollar um, actually helps an economy. So don't be fooled when you see you know dollar crashing and all that kind of stuff. A weaker currency and a devalued currency actually boosts exports, which helps G to grow GDP. So um, dollar's depreciation has spurred others to intervene. What that actually means is that other central banks who have a more expensive currency are at a disadvantage. It makes them less competitive uh, when it comes to um, you know growing their economy. Yeah, and this. Uh, this uh, paragraph really kind of spells it out, right? So for Yellen, who is, uh, who this month set herself apart from previous democratic administrations by rejecting a return to a strong dollar policy that could pose a challenge, right? Why would a central banker reject returning to a strong dollar policy? Because they understand, like I understand that currency devaluation, yeah, currency war, Right, and what is a currency war? Put simply, a currency war is also known as competitive devaluations, is a condition in international affairs where countries seek to gain a trade advantage, yeah, GDP trade advantage over other countries by causing the exchange rate of their currency to fall in relation to other currencies, and that's pretty much what is going on. So, other currencies and other central bankers have to intervene. Yeah, right. The euro, and we'll get to the euro fundamentals and technicals in a sec. Um, but uh, this is the reason why I am more medium to long term bearish on the euro and on the dollar, but probably more short term bullish. Um, and for some some other reasons, I'm probably more short term bullish on the dollar, but only against um, certain other currencies, which I'll get into. But dollar index. Um, is uh, is uh, a decent uh, I think is a decent buy in the you know the next maybe week two weeks three weeks who knows but there are opportunities to short I don't think this is really the opportunity to go short on the dollar right now again not financial advice just basically telling you what what my view is I could be wrong I could be right but when I'm right I make uh, a lot more than when I'm wrong so um, it's not about win rates or trying to predict the future it's just about seeing your analysis and if it plays out capitalizing. Um, the most you can so I think in the short term we probably may see uh, overall dollar you know strength might pull back it might do something like that but I think overall dollar strength but that just provides a shorting opportunity in the in the medium to long term so moving on to the dollar yen and the yen um, in a risk on environment doesn't tend to do well and you're seeing this pretty much play out right so I was saying this I've been saying this for the past uh, maybe a few months risk on environment vaccine led recovery global recovery you're going to see um, you know the yen weaken and we've seen that um, some of the guys in the group have had some really good trades in shorting the yen and buying commodity currencies uh, as of recent uh, and even myself uh, took um, some profit on um, some pairs that I don't necessarily analyze here um, and uh, from last year. So it's been some really nice trades uh, buying commodity currencies and shorting the Japanese yen. Um, but where we are at now, obviously, you, again, you have to deciding which one you want to be a buyer of, right? If you think that the the yen is a bargain at this supply zone, then you look for short trades here. If you don't think so, then and you want to be a buyer of the dollar, you're going to have to wait for higher highs, higher lows, or a pullback into a demand zone before getting long. Um, so that's pretty much where we are with uh, with the uh, with the yen, uh, dollar yen. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, and I think, and I was saying this, I wanted to get actually long. On this uh, currency, um, buying the uh, the dollar versus the Swiss franc, I uh, kind of missed out on, on on a bit of a trade there um, earlier this week. But I do honestly think that the the dollar should want to get stronger. I think for me, uh, the the, uh, the Swiss franc is going to be one of the weakest currencies if risk continues to be on. So the uh, Swiss franc for me is def is a definite sell in a risk on environment. So if there's any kind of pullback into a zone that I like, 
then that will definitely be for me be uh, I'll look for an opportunity to get long if you do you know want to get short at any point then um, really look for some risk off sentiment to come into the market first before looking at getting short at any of these areas here a nice pullback to this zone here would be really 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 nice for me I think um, currently if the risk is if risk remains on um, moving to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, I think this market is probably going to end up ranging at some point I think we've got another got some more supply there and some more supply in and around this area here but um, dollar CAD I think overall my bias is to buy the CAD maybe not against the dollar in in the short term but um, I do think that um, where we're at a bit of maybe a bit of a ranging market. So if you do want to get short anywhere around, you know, where we are in the supply zone right now is decent. If you want to be a buyer, then you're looking for maybe a bit of a deeper pullback before looking at getting long. Um, not really interested in this pair as much. Um, I was calling this uh, short from uh, before the election and you can see pretty much what's happened since November, uh, what's, what's really happened. But um, I think it's uh, the, the, the CAD, strength has made might have run its course in the short term but again medium to long term i think a deeper pullback for me and a fresher area of uh, of supply i think around here would be really nice that 130 round number i'd be looking for a potential short um but again in the short term um not too sure in this pair or not too keen on this pair there are better trades out there as they say um New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again the New Zealand dollar benefiting from risk on sentiment. We see, we saw a nice, uh, you know, buy trade right here. Um, this also turned into another demand zone right here. So we made higher highs, higher lows, demand right there, and you can see where price came back down into it on Thursday, bounced off of that zone there, and then um, ended up, you know, going uh, uh, higher. I think overall, though, we are in the highs you know if you look at the, looking at the overall trend and where prices have been i'm probably expecting a deeper pullback i really want a deeper pullback before i look for any kind of uh, long trades i do like this area here with the confluence of some horizontal uh, support i think that area there this uh, 0 0.7 uh oh five level i think is a really nice zone for any kind of uh, uh uh, long trades also you've got some local levels here which you saw in conjunction with some demand zones you can see where you had support and resistance 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 some resistance support there and you can see where prices did bounce off there as well um i do think um, if prices start to go higher then that's you know brilliant then you're looking for a pullback into some sort of demand um preferably i would want prices to really kind of come down to really around here before looking at uh, looking for any major buys at the moment um, uh, but again if, if there's short term dollar strength potentially um, then you probably might see this actually pull back I think this actually might be a really nice zone for a short trade nice fresh area of supply I do like that um, if I was looking for any kind of short trades on this currency pair um, looking now at the pound dollar and the pound dollar just keeps going from strength to strength um, higher and higher you can see pretty much what's going on and this is really more of a vaccine led move and the reason why if we go to uh, some 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 pound news the bond market is just is jettisoning UK negative rates bets ahead of the Bank of England and what that really means is that money markets have priced out and they're not pricing in so they're pricing out a chance of sub zero rates in 2021 and negative rates was um, um, being speculated upon and the money markets the bond market which is really the smartest guys there when it when it comes to things like interest rates um, and really the economy and whatever the bond market says um, these guys are like I said the smartest guys because they really understand um, the impact of interest rates and inflation um, on the economy and the, the, so the, the bond market is pricing out a chance of uh, zero rates in 2021 and a vaccine-led progress vaccine-led progress Brexit 
still have tempered economic pessimism. So there was a lot of pessimism around the pound in the UK, including myself, but it looks like um, the pound in the UK are leading the way when it comes to uh, the vaccine rollout. So what that essentially means is that the more people that get vaccinated, the quicker they can get back to work and the quicker um, the economy can reopen and start to grow again, right? So that's the bet. You have to be two steps ahead, one, two steps ahead of what you're looking at now. And this is really what um, is driving the pound is the future expectation of value. There's no point in buying the pound after you see the good news, right? It's it's anticipating the uh, the, 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 the news, right, of, of, um, of, uh, of good news, basically. And uh, understanding that we have to be ahead of the potential um, for the economy to start outgrowing other economies, right? So with that being said, and also as well, just to back that up, Bank of England unlikely to cut rates below zero in the near term survey shows. So only one in 14 economists expect uh, adoption of sub-zero rates officials to keep asset buying benchmark and change next week. So again, that's, you know, the fact that they're not um, as dovish on um, sub-zero rates, cutting rates into the negative is actually bullish for the pound. So with that being said, any pullbacks you're probably looking at is here now. From a technical analysis perspective, this is not a pretty chart at all, but there are ways to um you know uh, to understand where in these wide demand zones that we should be possibly looking at and one of the things we look at is horizontal support and resistance um because that adds to the supply and demand equation at levels right we know that there's demand here because prices are going higher making higher highs right but also from a technical analysis perspective we understand where the financial institutions are looking at because they've been looking at those areas in the past so support and resistance so within that larger demand zone i think that 135 round number is definitely a zone that's of interest and it's been watched in the past so um, you can get a bit more detail if you do want to go down into like the hourly the four hourly etc and start to look for you know more intricate um uh, trades as far as uh, uh buy trades if you want but um for this video uh, we just look towards the uh, the daily um, zones as those are, would be the strongest areas of um, and areas where we want to be buyers potentially. Um, from a sell trade perspective, there's really nothing. The last kind of supply zone was really all the way back up here. I would be interested possibly in this uh, supply zone or this area. I wouldn't say in this area, supply zone, but not from 2018, but it's a high right it's definitely a high to look towards there is supply here but as i always say what drove prices down here yeah two years ago is not always going to be the same uh, fundamentals that's going to drive prices down here so the best thing to do is if prices continue to make their way up and then they react here and then there's some sort of fundamental or risk sentiment change then that would be where you would look for um, any kind of supply but we want it to react there first and then look towards the fundamentals or fundamentals first and then look towards the technicals really this is what you should be doing um so in the again in the short to medium term oh i say definitely medium term um i'm probably a bit more bull bullish on the pound and then as long as the uh, the data supports that so gdp starts to grow for example and the vaccine-led recovery is actually having an effect on the economy um, then that will drive, you know, bullishness uh, for the pound. Um, so nothing from a technical analysis, from a sell perspective, unless prices kind of prove that there is supply here. Um, and if there is prices do, you know, start coming down, then you can start drawing a supply zone there and then look for any kind of short trades if you're really that bullish on the dollar. Moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, I'm actually short term uh, bearish on this. I do think that the, that the dollar, um, depending on what comes out this week, because we do have um, some um, uh, some analysis coming out as far as uh, news in the week ahead. Um, I think the euro um, is probably on a bit on a bit on the back foot, and I think there may be an opportunity to actually short down to this one. 0.195 area this this uh, demand zone so um let's see what happens but with the euro going into some euro analysis uh, ecb officials agree to counter investor rate cut skepticism so lagarde emphasized 
all ECB tools are viable if needed and the market pricing suggests rate cut through March 2022 is unlikely. That is a problem with the Europe, with Europe, yeah, is that um, Europe and the Euro is actually quite expensive, which is not good for the economy because it makes them less competitive as I've previously pointed out you know, with the uh, currency wars. So European Central Bank policymakers are uncomfortable that investors appear to be largely ruling out interest rate cuts and have agreed to, and, and have agreed to stress that such stimulus remains a viable option. And what that really means is that the, uh, the, the, the investors are saying, well, we don't believe you that, we're, that they're going to make an interest rate cut. Right, they're not, and so if they're not going to make interest rate cuts, which basically means that they're trying to devalue their currency, then what will investors do? They're going to start buying, right? Same thing that will have, that I explained with the with, with the pound. They're looking to buy the pound, and the reason why they're looking to buy the pound is because bond investors are saying, well, we don't believe that the Bank of England are going to be, you know, cutting rates into the negative. So it's really, you know, quite uh, hawkish for the pound, I should say. So with Europe, they have a bit of a conundrum because they have an expensive euro, which is a problem because an expensive currency doesn't help when it comes to uh, GDP and making um, you know uh, uh, their economy quite competitive when it comes to exports. So, um, so they don't believe the uh, the uh, European Central Bank. So they're probably looking to and until the European Central Bank really start to ramp up the rhetoric and uh, really kind of threaten that, you know, that they are and they will do something about it, um, you know, the uh, investors aren't necessarily looking for um, a, a weaker euro. But I do think that forces the, the ECB into potentially taking more of a, you know, stance when it comes to having to weaken their currency because they have to do it anyway, regardless of whether the... Um, investors are skeptic uh skeptical or not so going back to the fundamentals i think in the in the in the short term you may get obviously a pullback but any pullbacks for me right are i think short term um uh, sells euro dollar so i do think that the the um the dollar is actually and the us is actually winning the war the currency war the higher this goes the more uncomfortable this gets for europe um and uh, so they have to really start to do something. So if we do see prices start to come up and come up, that's putting pressure on the ECB. And then you want to look for potential short trades in and around here. Nobody knows where exactly it's going to turn. That's the reason why we just manage our risk. If we lose one trade, it's fine. Because if we're right on this, we've got multiples of R. We can go for 10, 15, 20 to you know, one type trades if we're right about you know, the, our fundamental direction. So that's where we are with the euro against the dollar. Um, looking at the euro yen, and euro yen coming up to a uh, uh, the supply zone. This was a really nice trade earlier um, uh, last week and last couple of weeks ago. I made a video on this on the YouTube channel, a nice CPR zone, really, really nice zone here. And you can see pretty much what's happened. It's gone for a really uh, nice couple of hundred pips. So. Um, and really, the, 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 again, as I was saying, the yen is a really a sell and a risk uh, on environment. The euro is definitely going to be the one that was going to be the stronger out of the two. Um, so that was a nice trade there. Demand, so this demand has made higher highs, higher lows. We've come to a nice area of supply, but again, it depends on whether you think the year, the, the yen is worth you know, buying here. Is the yen a bargain? That's the question you have to ask yourself, right? Is the yen a bargain and what makes it a bargain? Just because prices come up to a level of supply doesn't mean that you know prices are going to reverse. You need to understand why, from a fundamental and risk sentiment perspective, why the yen is likely to be a bargain, why the euro is likely expensive up here, and uh, you know why uh, prices are likely to um, you know fall from here from a fundamental and risk sentiment perspective. So for example, if risk sentiment starts to come back off, yeah, the yen should be the one to buy. Yeah, that should be the one to buy. And then you would say, all right, then that's the reason why. But if risk continues to be on, yeah, then why are you getting short here? It makes absolutely no sense. But um, again, if you want to find out more about how I go about analyzing levels, not just from a technical analysis perspective, but from a fundamental perspective, um, you know, you can uh, check out trading180.com. Um, 
Continuing, I think, for me, any kind of pullbacks into this area, especially this lower zone here. I do like this zone, um, this 12550 now. I think that's a really nice level for a potential buy um, against the uh, the yen, as long as risk remains on. If prices do come down here, I think that's really nice for a long trade. Even better would be, you know, pullback down here. Um, so that's where we are uh, with the euro yen and Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar continues to kind of remain, um, you know, again, no real major pullbacks for me. For me, I think, um, I think probably anywhere around within this zone, I think possibly if I'm looking at this area here, probably might look for that zone around here for any kind of uh, buy trades. Again, the Australian dollar doing really well in a risk on environment. So prices can come down to the 75 round number, matter of fact. So I'll just drag that down a little bit more. So that 75 round number, I think that's that's a really nice um, area to look for any kind of long trades within that demand zone. And again, there's I think there's some minor levels within there as well. I think there's some support and resistance, horizontal support and resistance right there. So you've got resistance, resistance. So that also that 75, 70 level could be a decent area for a buy trade as well. If you want to be long the Australian dollar, I think it's due, definitely due a pullback. We've had that massive run and really no major pullback. So I'm probably looking for some sort of pullback into the 75 round number. Even better would be 74. I think that's a nice area because you've got some nice confluence of uh, daily support and resistance within that demand zone there so that would be even nicer for a really nice uh, trade to the to the upside but how it's going to get there who knows um and again if you see some short term dollar us dollar strength that would you know be quite nice um where are we i think i'm going to delete that demand zone as we've touched this demand zone here and i'm going to extend this supply zone down to around here yeah so that looks uh, much better and again, any kind of um, pullbacks, if you wanna be a buyer with a US dollar up here, not the best area to look for supply though, because just the way that it's uh, it's moved away from that, you wanna see really kind of hard in, hard out movement, but this has kind of done it really um, slowly and choppy wise. So not the greatest from a supply zone perspective. And then moving on to the Aussie uh, yen. And again, Aussie yen going into more of a ranging market. We've seen prices have really kind of been contained between you know this high and this low at the moment over the past you know since pretty the beginning of the year and i think this is maybe due a bit of a pullback if it can pull back to this zone here i think that demand zone started at maybe the uh, 78 50 50s down to 77 50 is a really nice zone for a uh, long trade um for now though supply you're probably looking at something around here so potential for a nice short trade if you want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen. But again, why would you want to be a buyer of the yen in the risk on environment? So even though prices may come down, is that the smartest move? Why not just wait for prices to pull back and then look for some long trades? Um, and then finally, we have uh, gold. So gold uh, this week um, with some dollar strength, I think dollar strength, uh, we could see we could see a bit of a pullback on on gold. You know, I do like this area, this eighteen hundred area, as a nice potential buy. Even better for here. Yeah, down down here this is my, is my bias to seventeen eighty six to seventeen sixty four area. I think that's a really nice buy um, uh, for various reasons. The guys that are in the group will know this as a capture pain relief zone right here. So for me, on a lower time frame, that entry. It's going to be really nice. It, again, it depends on you know if we even get an entry because uh, that's what we need is the final thing. But once prices come down to this eighteen ten area, I think it's quite nice for a potential buy. And it might be that level might even might be manipulated when we look for a stop hunt trade. But um, below that, I think is really nice as well. A nice fresh area of uh, of demand and gold has. Um, has uh you know the demand has kind of been off the uh the boil but demand for gold jewelry fell to lowest record in 2020 again that's unsurprising because if you consider um the fact that we were in lockdown and uh who was really buying jewelry and for what right um 
who's got jobs, you know what I mean? There's a high unemployment, people being laid off. The last thing they're looking to do is, is buy gold, looking to survive, really. So, um, you know, with, with the Chinese economic recovery, though, is supporting a rebound in demand. So global gold demand is set to recover this year after slumping to the lowest in more than a decade in 2020, according to the World Gold Council. So um, just goes into, into some statistics about, you know, decade low gold demand. Again, jewelry sales. Um, but if that jewelry sales start to pick up, as well as things like inflation anyway. So you've got to think about, um, you know, the, the central bank, uh, printing inflation is coming in inflation is just basically currency valuation or devaluation so in a pandemic era central banking is creating bubbles everywhere cheap money provided by central banks has been inflating assets and reshaping how we save invest and spend and uh, interesting article from bloomberg but if you look at you know governments are loading up on debt so central bank balance sheets look at what's been happening massive massive you know near parabolic moves look at the uh, federal reserve look at that adding you know to to their debt and it's uh it's crazy the amount of um debt that's been uh or money that's being printed um to basically save the global economy but that should um devalue currencies and it will be net net positive for gold anyway so in the short term nobody knows it's very very difficult to kind of predict what price is going to do in the short term yeah day to day week to week but month to month yeah um, year to year, you can you know six months, three months, quarterly. Um, you can you you pretty much know um, or have a have a higher probability of understanding where gold is going to go because of the amount of money printing, inflation, etc. That is going on in the um, uh, in with, with the financial system. So uh, Goldman Sachs, I think, um, are still uh, no sorry, Citigroup is still predicting. I think by the end of the year, twenty one hundred. Uh, gold to so that city, city group. Yeah, I'm still uh, doing that. And in fact, I'll show you a quick uh, quote from a uh, city group, um, city bank um, uh, uh, PDF that we use in the group. So gold news, this is from Citibank, um, you know, gold news, the market reacted positively to the inauguration. It goes through the gold news, gold outlook. We expect the gold market bull cycle to slow, but not end. So long as the Fed's monetary policy stays accommodative at the zero bound level, commits to dovish forward guidance and continuing with its QE program. Remember what I was saying about the dollar medium to long term. Yellen is not committed to an expensive dollar. She wants a weak dollar overall. Yeah, so we look for gold prices to move towards the $2,100 an ounce over the next six to nine months before moderating in 2022. Overall gold prices should average around that in 2021, average that. So average the 1900. So, um, you know, basically uh, understanding where the long-term forecasts are, so maybe the the not to three zero to three month forecast eight around 1850 but the six to 12 month forecast is higher so any really any any pullbacks if you think about where we are now we're at 1847 which is basically around the average so anything below that yeah it looks like an absolute bargain doesn't it so that's where the money is made yeah is is buying for cheap and this was obviously a bargain back in 30th of november and prices went higher the bargain hunters you know prove that there's a bargain here so if prices ever do come back to around the 1780 level is that going to be a bargain again and again that's what we do as uh as not only supply and demand traders but we do that as fundamental and risk sentiment analysis traders you need to add this string to your bow to understand what's going on in the market how can you call yourself you know a gold trader or a, a forex trader a true forex trader if you don't even understand um uh, interest rates inflation um and, and gdp and the relationship between it yeah you trade you might trade forex but if you don't understand that you're going to get laughed out of the room really you can't take you know you, you can't really enter into certain conversations with uh, serious traders anyways guys um that's it for now I hope you enjoyed this week. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Let me know on a new format. 
um, if you prefer this way or I can go back to the old way of just doing the fundamentals first and then doing the technicals but I think you know integrating both at the same time gives it a nice little mix anyways guys have a great trading week don't forget to check out a lot of the videos on my YouTube channel and also as well um, the private mentoring um, and private group is closing uh, within the next couple of days so head over to trading180.com um, within if you after you watch this video it might be too late but if you do um, and uh, you know if you want some mentoring if you want to understand really the fundamentals behind um, currencies as well as gold silver bonds etc then head over and you can access that for literally less than 99 pence per day anyways guys take care and I'll speak to you all soon